Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. This is the day after summer solstice and I'm here at the fairy dell just to usher the summer in. And I had a story to tell you about a movie episode that I saw last night. It was a movie series called Psych, P-S-Y-C-H. It reminds me a little bit of myself because of my clear abilities that I got as ascension gifts through the ascension process in the last bunch of years. So, um, and also I have an interest in crime prevention, uh, but I don't have the flair and pizzazz of the, of the heroes of that story, that's for sure. I'm not cut out for that. Nevertheless, I watch it because it's a very entertaining show. And uh, I saw episode seven last night of the first, um, the first run of the series. And uh, it was a story about a person who had a multiple personality. It was a triple personality. And uh, in fact, it was I who came up with that term. It was the weirdest thing. It was like deja vu because I had run into a triple multiple personality some years prior under life and death circumstances. I ran into the violent, murderous um, personality in a trio of personalities. You can look that one up on my website by searching for the term P-I-N-K-I-E, Pinky. And the, the stories that have Pinky in them relate to the triple multiple personality that I ran into. It was not anybody I had ever known, but just someone that I encountered in a, in a church parking lot one time in uh, Hollywood, I think it was. Anyway, so here I was watching TV last night, and there on Psych Season 1, Episode 7, I ran across what seemed like the same character with the same set of personalities. There was one kind of normal guy, you know, well-spoken, well-educated, kind of slight in build. There was another version of that person that was a transvestite dressed as a woman and believing that he was a woman. And then there was another violent version of the person. And it was the same as what I had run into in the psychic realm and once in real life. And it was odd, you know. Hollywood does weird things to the life and death situations that assail us it, here in the third dimension, doesn't it? Uh, that show seems so entertaining, so lighthearted, so... Everyone seems so affable, so easy to like, even, even the people that use guns to shoot figurines seem like lovable people, you know? And and the three characters in the, in the triple multiple personality also seem very lovable, very likable. Not really like people who would hurt you or kill you or anything like that. More like just a story on TV, a story in the movies, not something real. So I got to thinking about how things are portrayed in the movies. Um, and there are good and bad things to be said about this whitewashing thing that's been happening. Whitewashing of violence in the movies. One thing is that uh, when we see the true headlines, like in the Los Angeles Times, like this series of gun incidents and murders and, you know, awful things that happened as lead up to solstice um, this year, uh, we're less likely to be affected with adrenaline issues and constant fears and so forth, you know. So seeing violence in the movies has a way of taming the violence that's really happening out there in the street so we don't live our lives in fear. And of course that's important. There are other possibilities here. One is that it's offhandedly possible that there are people, a few people in Los Angeles, who have these major um, antisocial personality issues and who have 
are either very clever or else they have a lot of money at their disposal and who are usually uh, a able to evade the law. Well, what would they want more than to, to have the danger that they represent to society minimized for most people? And what would they be more likely to do than to present what their very lives are in a context that seems unreal and uh, harmless to the greatest possible number of people? And how could that be done except through um, promoting such a movie? Maybe the, by helping to, to pay for whatever it might be. That's a thought. But that's a far out there thought. Um, there's another thought I have to do with responses to emergencies. And as you know, I, in earlier years I wrote quite a bit about that because the first few years of a, a person's ascension process in the, their first solar cycle when they're fully awakened are seem to be fraught with peril for most people. For more on that, you can go to my website and search for the word perilous to find out the things that frightened me way back when. Well, you might be facing them and you might not, but it's good to, to try to pinpoint the way that we react to emergencies just in case, in case something should come up here in LA, as has come up for a few people here and there over the course of the ramp up to summer solstice with all the great light coming in. It strikes some people the wrong way, you know, but most people, they just find it glorious like I did, it was just terrific. But in case you're near somebody like that, somebody who's potentially violent at a time when there's a lot of light coming in, it's good to notice how it is that you usually react to danger. At first, when I started writing about that, all I knew about was fight or flight. And I figured I react by fighting if I have to, but I react by fleeing from a situation if I'm able to that's the best way. You know, years ago I took karate and the person that was in charge of our group told me to do the same. He told that to everybody. If you can, he said, avoid conflict. Only in the very last instance should you fight. So, later on I found out there's other ways that people manage the approach or the possibility of danger. These are called fawn, freeze, and flop. Let's start with flop. Flop is just where you faint or you cease to do anything. Okay. Freeze is where you stand perfectly still and don't do anything but you're, you haven't fainted. I guess that's it. And Fawn is where you walk up to the predator that, that you're encountering and try to be the very best friend you can. You say, oh, what can I do for you? Oh, will you be my playmate like that? And in your mind, you try to make friends with them. So, let's say that you yourself have sensed this pinky danger, this triple multiple personality danger or also the type of danger that's called multiple personality, maybe just two personalities or antisocial personality disorder or something like that. Someone like that is approaching you, okay? What are you going to do? You know, fight or flee or freeze or fawn or flop. And if you chose the coping mechanism called fawning, you might be inclined to make a movie like that in your mind. Here's a person, you say, who has odd personality quirks, but they're really a lovable person, aren't they? They're really the nicest person, surely. We could be friends, couldn't we? So they're a little quirky. And then, if you happen to be someone involved in the movies, you might put out a movie like that. That's my thought on it. You know, I don't know what to say. I'm glad that, that the movies have put out something similar to what I experienced in real life. Fawning would not be something that I would ever do. 
unless I had no other options. You know, if I were caught by the giant dragon in the great cave on a stony island with nothing but stormy seas all around, there were no other beings anywhere, and I depended on the dragon for food, I would probably try fawn. What do you say? But in the normal instance, if I could get away, if there were a way to get away, I would pick flight. I would get out of that place and out of danger. So I have to say, although it was very interesting to see what Hollywood would do with my experience, or what seemed to be very close to my experience uh, in real life, overall, uh, I feel that they made the wrong choice. I truly do. Why don't you look at that movie? Um, Psych. P-S-Y-C-H. It's a movie series. It's, it's the first season. It's the seventh episode. And then take a look at my own description of that personality disorder and see what you think. After all, it's up to you to figure out how to deal with the perilous circumstances in your own life. Well, a somber note for a beautiful summer day. And it's starting to rain and, and that's tr truly a blessing here in California. It's already rained once today where I was early in the morning. There was a st stroke of thunder. My computer went out. One of my speakers for the computer fried itself and then everything was set right. And now we have the fairy dell. Beautiful. And another rain shower. Isn't that great? Maybe it's a sign that the weather will improve and optimize here on earth in the years to come. Well, that's all for now, dear ones. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days. See you next time. I took some pictures for your enjoyment during the walk today and I thought I would publish some very, very fast for you at the end of this video. Um, then, if you have a hankering to, to observe them for a while, I'll put the best of them online on my website so that you can take a look.